Our scripture reading for today is found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 6. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, where the prophecy let us prophesy according to the portion of faith. May God bless us by the reading of his word. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church family. Can you hear me? Sorry, this feels like headphones. I don't know if I'm listening to myself talk or if you can actually hear me. Okay. Praise God. Praise God for hearing. All right. I can see a few smiling faces. Please smile. You make me nervous. I always say this when I come to the front. Uh, apart from Fine, who comes up and sweats profusely up here, I'm the other guy. That's why you don't see me up here all the time. Um, but praise God, when he, um, when he calls you, you must answer. Um, put self aside and answer the call. All right, um, oh, I don't have PowerPoint slides. Sorry, I just remembered. Um, so today my uh, sermon title is Fad or Faith? Fad or Faith? Um, sorry, before I start, let me say a word of prayer. Father in heaven, please be with us uh, this Sabbath morning. Please speak through me. Uh, allow your spirit to open up our ears so that we may hear your word and we may answer according to your will. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Lord. I pray in your most precious name. Amen. All right. Um, so as most of you know, I was, um, I was brought up by a mom who was very strong in the faith. She, um, she's someone who I'd like to say is very, is, is kind of stubborn. I've, I've taken up some of her traits. Um, but when it comes to Jesus and the Bible and faith, she doesn't compromise with anything. And growing up, um, growing up in Port Moresby, uh, well, I guess growing up anywhere in the world, you have a lot of influences, um, outside influences that um, come into your life. And even when you're in the church, um, when I was going to a public school, I had it was my first time to, when I uh, went to a public school, I had been in um, SDA school all my life, and my first time going to a public school, there was this um, group called, um, I can't remember what they were called, but they were a group of Christians um, that all came together, and when they started, um, they started praying, they started praying in tongues, and I was like, what are these people saying? This was my first time ever I was exposed to this. I said, what are these people saying? They're praying in tongues and I can't understand. So I asked my friend. I said, hey, you were praying in tongues as well? What were, uh, did you understand what these other people were saying? He said, oh, I, I, did, I didn't really understand what they were saying, but I could understand what I was saying. So that made me question a lot of, um, question a lot of things. How... How does this, um, how, how come these people, is, uh, how come they're so different to, their worship style is so different to 
uh, my worship style. So I asked my mom a few questions and she gave me answers that satisfied my um, questions. And yeah, we, we eventually um, came to an agreement that, you know, everyone is different. But um, I guess the reason I brought up my mom is that she, yeah, she has never really um, compromised um, anything to do with faith. And I guess I think the biggest uh, thing that, the biggest testament is my father. My father is a Uniting Church pastor's son. So when he met my mother, he was a Baptist. I know it sounds a bit weird, but he went from Uniting Church to being a Baptist. But when he was seeing mum, sometimes when he would, uh, he would come and stay over with us on a Friday night, he, Friday night is footy night. So he would t- try to turn the TV on. The first time he turned the TV on, my mum said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I, I want to watch uh, footy. Sorry, excuse me. He said, I want to watch footy. And mum said, not in my house. And then he said, oh, but it's just, like, I mean, it's your Sabbath. You don't need to watch it. I'll watch it, he said. And then she said, no, you're in my house. You go by my rules, she said. So you don't watch footy. So it turned out that every Friday night, my dad would, uh, if he saw that mom was away for uh, Friday night fellowship, he would stay home. He would watch, watch footy. And then as soon as uh, mom came home, he would turn off the TV. But mom was smart, you see. She would go and put her hand. We had one of those really big box TVs, you know. She would go put her hand on the TV. She's like, you've been watching footy, huh? And then <laughs> he'd be like, yeah, I just watched a bit. But she never compromised with him. And I believe that that was one of the things that she saw, uh, he saw in her that made, her, made him think about, really think about uh, what kind of faith he was following and who he was actually, uh, what kind of Jesus or what kind of God he was actually uh, serving. I'll ask you all to turn your Bibles to Hebrews 11 verse 1. This is a very well-known um, text and it's, um, <clears throat> it defines uh, what, what faith is. What, what is Hebrews 11 anyways? It is the chapter of, the chapter of faith. So it's, it makes sense that the very first verse defines what faith is. So it reads, Hebrews 11 verse one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How, that's a very, when I first read that verse, I, I, was, I was very confused. Um, as I said, how can, you, how can you see evidence in things that you cannot see? How can you um, find substance in things that, are, that you only hope for? How does that, How do you make sense out of all of that? Well, um, today I'm gonna, I'll I'll kind of try and take you on on my faith journey and um, yeah, hopefully at the end of it, I will answer um, those questions that I just um, asked. All right, sorry, I just, I just have some notes on my phone as well, so I just need to put this on the side. I'm not making a phone call. All right. All right. So, what is faith? We've just defined faith as uh, being the substance of things that we hope for and the evidence of things. Sorry, excuse me again. The evidence of things that we cannot see. Um, C. D. Brooks, um, one of my favorite preachers, he once said uh, he he went to a university to do some lectures and. He saw this um, thing about faith on one of the blackboards and he wrote it down. It read, faith is an attitude, uh, an attitude toward God of love, trust, and deep admiration. It means having enough confidence in God based upon overwhelming evidence that has been revealed. To be willing to believe whatever he says, accept whatever he offers, and do whatever he wishes without reservation, for the rest of your life. 
So faith is an eternal thing. It's something that you do for the rest of your life. If it's not something that you're gonna do for the rest of your life, then it's probably just a fad. It's probably just something that's happening in the here and now. If, um, if it is something that you will be doing for the rest of your life, then that's the basis of faith. As Christians, is it possible? Do you believe it's possible to please God without any faith? No. And the Bible tells us that. If you turn to Hebrews 11 verse 6 with me, the Bible will tell you that it's impossible to please God without faith. So Hebrews 11 verse 6 reads, but without God, uh, sorry, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So here we see that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And in also in order to please God, we must diligently seek God. Um, Ellen White says in um, Education, page 253, Faith is trusting God, believing that he loves us and knows best what is for our good. Thus, instead of our own, it leads us to choose his way in place of our ignorance. It accepts his wisdom in place of our righteousness, or sorry, in place of our weakness, his strength, in place of our sinfulness, his righteousness. Our lives, ourselves are already his. Faith acknowledges his ownership and accepts his blessing. Truth, uprightness, uh, uprightness, purity have been pointed out as secrets of life success. It is faith that puts us in possession of these principles. So, after reading all of that, I, I was like, so how do we... Where does faith come from? How do we get this faith? If, we, if you were listening to Nelly Reed, uh, or if you were following Nelly Reed, Romans 12, Romans 12 verse three tells us that we have all been given a, a measure of faith. Um, so it says, for I say, through the, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than you ought to think but to think soberly according as God hath dealt every man a measure of faith. So each of us has been given a measure of faith. Um, do you think it is fair to um, measure your faith against someone else's faith? No? Yes, no? No? All right, some of us look, have a blank look on our faces. But no, it's not, because the faith that, that is given to you is different. It, it's, it's a different measure of faith from the next person sitting next to you. And God knows the, the type of faith that we need um, in, order, in order for us to grow in, grow in faith. Um, yeah, so for us to grow in faith, how do, we, how do we grow this faith, this measure of faith that God has um, placed on us, um, and I guess um, the, the, the other question I should be asking is, um, when, when is our faith tested? When, when do we have our faith tested? When we're going through trials and tribulations, yeah? And when you're going through trials, that's when you, that's when you really know whether your Christianity is just a fad or whether it's actual faith. Let me tell you the story about, um, who knows the story about the 12 spies? The 12 spies, what happened with the 12 spies? They were sent, they were sent somewhere. They were sent to spy in Canaan. And they were supposed to, they were, good. they were to bring back a report to um, the children of Israel. Um, about what, um, 
what, yeah, what, what they went and um, had seen. So anyways, when they came back, what, were, what, was their, um, what was their report? Their report was that they had, um, they had seen that the land was flowing with milk and honey. They had two guys carry like a bunch of grapes like on their shoulders because it was so heavy and they, uh, they had to bring it back. After saying all these good things about Canaan, there was a but. They said, but, these people are giants. They're going to kill us. They're, once we go into their land, the ground is going to swallow us up. These people are, you know, these people are this and these people are that. And who are the two people that actually didn't um, respond that way? Caleb and, Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua were the um, only two people that, or only two spies that didn't respond in that, um, in that manner. And when I was listening to uh, Mark Finley preach about this story, he said, the focus of the 10 spies was on um, what Canaan could offer to them, not what God could offer for them. The focus of Caleb and Joshua was their faith in God because Caleb and Joshua did not forget the plagues that God had put, uh, cast upon Egypt while they were in Egypt. Um, Caleb and Joshua did not forget um, God leading them out of Egypt, God opening up the Red Sea for them and allowing them to walk through and then closing it back up when the Egyptians came, came through. Caleb and Joshua did not forget all, any of the promises that God had um, given to them. And it made me think, um, what is my faith based on? Is my faith based on God? Or is my faith based on material things? Is my faith based on my abilities? Is my faith based on my capabilities? Is my faith based on what I can do for, you know, for someone else and not what God can do for, um, what God can do for me? And man, it was very, it was a very sobering thought. I said, man, you know, sometimes when I'm at work and there's decisions to be made, I'm like, man, how can I do this? How can I, um, how can I fix this problem? How can I do this on my own? Without thinking that maybe I should pray, you know? My immediate concern is my abilities instead of, you know, praying, praying immediately to God to ask for, ask for direction. Jesus has invited us to enter into a relationship of trust and love with our heavenly Father. If you turn with me to Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. Um, Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. And I'm gonna read from the King James Version. And it reads, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and he shall have them. So there, there is a, Apart from having faith, there is a certain, oh well, belief is an element of faith. Um, even the disciples, people who were closest to Jesus when he was here, here on earth, even they asked Jesus to help them increase their faith, which is a prayer that we should have in our hearts every day. The apostles in Luke 17, verse five to six, asked Jesus, they said, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as, as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. 
how do we how do we increase our faith in God? There are many promises and many stories in the Bible. You can, I'd like for you to name, name a few. Can you name a few stories of faith in the Bible that relate to your, um, uh, your circumstances? What about uh, the lesson, the lesson we've been studying, Daniel. Daniel and his three friends. They stood up in faith when, um, when they were challenged um, by the Babylonians or when they were taken into, um, uh, into Babylon. They stuck to eating just, you know, pulse and drinking water and not eating from the king's table. That is uh, an, a, a great example of faith. What about... Um, who, who else can you think of? Joseph, Abraham. There's so many people you can think of in the Bible. And I think one of my favorites of all time is Job. Job was put through so many tests and trials. And he was, God allowed the devil to test Job because the devil said, he is, just, he is just obeying you only because you have blessed him with all these things. Once you take all these things away from him, he's going to curse your name. But what happened? He never once cursed God's name. He stayed faithful to God even when all his children died, all his livestock were killed. Even when his wife told him to curse God, he said no. He said, naked I came into this world, naked I am going to go out of this world. But God, he still, he still stayed faithful to God. And he never lifted one, uh, one finger, one tongue um, toward, um, yeah, toward God. He, uh, um, C.D. Brooks had a funny take on this. He said, he said, you know, I feel like if the devil had known that Job would have stayed faithful all throughout, that, um, all throughout those tests and trials, he never would have tested him because he would, <laughs> he would, <laughs> he would have seen that um, Job would have inspired you know, so many people down the line and all these people would reflect on the words, uh, on Job's words, on Job's experiences and they would have known and they would have um, stayed faithful to God even when they were going through all their trials and tribulations. Um, yeah, so studying the Bible, it helps, us, it helps us increase our faith in God. Um, Romans 10 verse 17 tells us, so then faith cometh by what? Hearing. By hearing. And by hearing what? By hearing the word of God. In the study of the Bible, Sorry, this is a quote from Ellen White in Education, in the book of Education, page 254. Uh, it reads, in the study of the Bible, the student should be led to see the power of God's word. In the creation, he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. He called those things which be not as though they were for when he calls them, and they are. In order for us to benefit from the testimonies of faith, we have to personally apply those testimonies to our lives. We must practice and we must exercise our faith and believe that God will help us accomplish these miracles according to his will, and he will. Um, I remember... Um, I remember sitting in the classroom, I always tell this story to um, Goins and some of the younger boys uh, when I first moved here to Sydney. When I first moved here to Sydney, I had just left, um, yeah, obviously I had just left Brisbane, but yeah, I had just moved here from Brisbane and I had left my parents. I said, this is going to be a journey of faith for me. I'm going to come and I'm going to see how God leads me. I said, I didn't have much money in my bank. Um, I just paid for my ticket. 
I paid for my ticket and then my cousin told me, he said, hey, can you, bro, can you pay for my ticket? I said, bro, I don't have that much money, but it's okay. If you guys know my cousin Junior, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> so he said, uh, he said, can you pay for my ticket? I said, I don't have much money, but I said, this is a new journey for me. I'm going to walk in faith, I said, I'm going to go. So I paid for my ticket, I came, turned up, and I said, okay, bro, what are we going to do? He said, um... He said, bro, I really didn't have a plan. I said, what do you mean you didn't have a plan? I thought you had something lined up for me, so I, I moved here. He said, no, I really didn't, he said. I said, don't worry, let's just, let's pray. God will answer our prayers, he said. I said, all right. <laughs> I said, this guy, man, I should just go back to Brisbane. He conned me into coming here. Anyways, uh, first day we arrived, Nolan picked us up from uh, Newcastle Airport. We came... Arrived at the house. Who's been up to Kurenbong, to the Hulistan's place? You see that, um, have you had a tour of the studio up, uh, up in Kurenbong? Well, we did the groundwork for that. We didn't necessarily do the groundwork, but my first day was digging a drain for the studio <laughs> to go in. So that was my first um, experience um, here in Newcastle. But it, it really helped me because um, I really... I had nothing, I, I, I really had nothing except my, my faith in God and I said, I said look, look Lord, if, if, this is, if this is where you need me to be and if this is like what you need me to be doing at this time, this is what I'm going to do, I said. So, you know, we, um, Kega and I went and worked out in a farm for a bit um, with Simi as well. Um, the junior came and helped out a bit, but it was really hard work. I remember some days, like, some days the boys were like, do we still have to go? Can't they just pay us now? <laughs> and uh, I was just like, look, I have nothing else to do. Um, this is the only way I'll be able to earn some money, I said. So we went out. Um, God blessed, uh, blessed me with uh, some accommodation. And then um, I think after that job finished, uh, Junior told me, he said, hey, Pastor's um, started up a cleaning business, he said. Why don't you call Pastor and ask him? I think he's looking for some workers. So I said, oh, all right, I'll give him a call. So I gave him a call that night, and then Pastor asked, can you start tomorrow? I said, oh, okay, yeah, sure. I'll start, uh, I'll start tomorrow. So I, I was working with Pastor for, I think this was in 2014. Yeah, 2014. I worked with Pastor for a bit, and um, yeah, we, we worked out in Gosford, and one day, one afternoon, I sat there, I was, I, was, I think it was myself and Herod, Herod and um, Gohan, so Alan, either one of them, we were, we were cleaning, and I, th I think I had finished a bit earlier, so I went and sat down in one of the classrooms, and I sat down, and I, 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 I was like, what am I doing here? This was like a self-evaluating moment, you know. I said, what am I doing here and what am I doing with my life? Did God send me here to be a cleaner? I said, I really don't know what I'm doing with my life, I said. So I sat down and I prayed. And this was my specific prayer. I said, Lord, I said, I really don't know what you have me doing here in Sydney, I said. But I know you hear prayers. And... I know you, you even answer the prayers of sinners, I said. I said, but Lord, I, I just want to ask you right now. I said, I said, if it's your will, I said, I was very specific about my prayer. I said, next year, I want to be working in an office. I said, if, if it's accounting work that you want me to do, then fine, I'll do accounting work. I said, I'd never go back into doing any accounting work. I said, if it's accounting work you want me to do, then I'll do it. I said, I prayed specifically. I said, I want, I want to work in an office and I want to have an office of my own. I said, I don't want to share an office with anyone else. I said, I know it's a greedy prayer, but I said, I've been faithful to you for this long. I said, that's the least you can do, I said. So anyways, we, um, I, I ended up saying amen and then I, I went, went about and finished my, finished my work. And little did I know that 
God would remember that prayer. Um, yeah, <clears throat> he, man, the, the way God, God answered that prayer, it was amazing. Um, and yeah, it, 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 was a, it was a real eye-opener for myself um, that, you know, having, having, having just a little bit of faith and praying, praying a prayer in faith like that, you know, God, God would hear my prayer. And sure enough, the very next year, um, I think as soon as Olive um, started working at the, was it the division? The division office, yeah. As soon as she started working at the division office, I got a phone call. I had an interview. Gons was, was there with me the whole time. Um, they asked me if I wanted to work, if, if, if I, uh, when I could start work, and I said, oh, I could start work tomorrow if you just want me to. And they said, oh, okay, that's all right. Um, they put me through a test. I did some tests with um, balancing some accounts and things like that. I couldn't balance the accounts because I had been cleaning for so long. I forgot how to do, I forgot to do all the accounting stuff, you know. And then I told them, I said, look, honestly, I, I, told, I told my boss at the time, I said, honestly, I, I really didn't know how to balance this account. I said, but trust me, I have done accounting work before. I said, if you give me the job, I, I'll be able to do it. Anyways, um, we're driving home and um, I ended up getting a phone call and the guy, uh, my boss told me, he said, oh, um, I said, I was able to get in touch with um, your two um, referees, but I need to get in touch with your pastor, he said. And I said, oh, my pastor is in PNG. I said, I don't know when he arrives back. So I asked Goins, I said, when does your father get back? And Goins says, oh, I think he arrives today. And then I said, all right. So I told the guy, I said, oh, maybe, maybe just try give him a call. And then, anyways, we just we went home, and then I was lying on the couch getting ready for my shift at um, sanitarium. And then um, Steve calls back, and he says, "Oh, um, hey, you did you know how you were saying um, you could start work tomorrow?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "But I really didn't want to start work because I was doing the night shift at sanitarium." So I said, um, "Yeah, sure." I said. Um, well, you, you've got the job. I said, oh, amen, praise the Lord. He said, and you're starting tomorrow, he said. Um, you have to report to the school at eight o'clock. I said, oh, amen, praise the Lord. I said, I said oh, man, praise the Lord. Um, okay, thank you, thank you so much. I said, I have to go and tell my boss tonight that um, I'm starting a new job tomorrow. So I was, I was working as a casual, so it didn't really matter. Um, I mean, you still, out of courtesy, give two weeks notice, but... I just went and told my boss, I've got a new job. I won't be coming back in. Don't give me any more shifts. Um, and he was like, oh, okay. Uh, doing what? I said, oh, doing some accounting work. He's like, you're an accountant? <laughs> I said, yeah, I am. And he said, what are you doing working in, the, in this um, factory? Why, what are you doing packing uh, wheat mix? I said, oh, well, I was doing some soul searching, and I guess, you know, this is what God wants me to do, so this is what I'm going to go and do. So anyways, the craziest thing about all of this is I knew that the school was in Sydney, but I didn't realize how big Sydney was. <laughs> so <laughs> I lived up in Bonos Bay. <laughs> I lived up in Bonos Bay, and then um, I, I think, uh, oh, I, I was excited, so I, I told Olive, um, I told Olive, I said, we'll have dinner together, I think, before I go, before or after I went for my shift. And she said, all right, let's catch up for dinner. And then we went and caught up for dinner. And then I told her, I said, like I had been telling her about, um, about the opportunity that had come up. And when we went to have dinner, I said, look, I have some really exciting news to tell you. I said, I've got a job at a school. And she was so, like, she was so happy because she had just started her, her job as well. And neither of us knew where MacArthur Adventist College was. So I asked her, do you know where MacArthur is? She said, oh, no, I don't know. It's in Sydney somewhere. I said, oh, okay, cool. I said, cool, cool. Um, 
I'll go and look it up. So after having dinner, I went back um, home, went on Google, and then typed in MacArthur Adventist College. And then um, I hit the enter button, and then it said two hours away from your destination. I was like, hey, wait, this can't be right. So I typed it again, hit uh, enter again, and then it said two hours away from your destination. I was like, oh, man. I just finished the night shift and I was so tired. I said, it's all right. This is what I've prayed for. I have to just go. So, you know, um, God led me there. And yeah, I've, I've been there ever since. Um, that's, 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 that's been my journey. Uh, that's been my journey. And I guess in all of it, um, I just want to say that it was nothing that I did. It was nothing that I was qualified to do. It was, it was something that, you know, I guess um, God need, it's, it was where God needed me to be um, at that time, and I, I praise God every day for that, um, that he was able to lead me there. Um, so coming back to uh, what I was talking about, how do we practice our faith? Faith is, faith is not like I said before, it's not a reliance on our abilities. It's not a reliance on our capabilities. It's not a reliance on what we can do. It's not a reliance on, um, on any, anything material. It's not a reliance on any of that. It's wholly and completely relying on God and trusting that God will, God will answer um, your prayers, trusting that all of God's promises that he said, or all of God's promises that he's promised you are true. This is not, I'm not trying to make this a feel-good sermon or anything like that. This is real. It's in the Bible. It tells us that if we do have faith and we do trust in God, God will deliver on, those, and on that faith and on those promises. Um... Most importantly, let us remember that faith is not believing that God will do whatever we want. It's like Jesus in Gethsemane, you know? He had to sacrifice himself and he was at a point where, you know, he knew that he was gonna die, he would have to die. And he prayed and he said, um, he fell on his face and he prayed and he said, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Prayer and faith go hand in hand. Um, prayer is the key to the hand of faith. If we're gonna be, uh, if we're gonna be people of faith, we must be people of prayer. Never in the Bible will you see anyone or any man of faith not be a man of prayer. If you look at Moses, you look at Noah, you look at Abraham, you look at Elijah, you look at Enoch, they walked with God every day. Every day they walked with God. They always walked with God and they prayed and they built their relationship on God. They, they never relied on men. They never relied on anything material. Everything was based on God. And their faith was based on God because they prayed every day and they, they just walked with him every day. Right now, there are many things in the world or many processes and things like that that are put in place to destroy, to misplace, displace, and replace our faith in God. There's so many things that we allow ourselves to distract us from God. Just look at, you know, you don't have to look far. You just put your hand in your pocket, pull it out, it's your phone. You can access anything on your phone, anything in the world on your phone. There's so many forms of entertainment. There's so many forms of, um, you know, Oh, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things that, that can distract us from a faithful life with God. Um, but 
all in all, we can have the absolute confidence as we sincerely seek God that uh, His will, by faith, He will reveal it to us, and prayer will reveal God's will for us and our lives, and will allow us to live uh, a faithful life to God. A life of Christian faith is one of uh, a life of Christianity is one of constant faith and trust in a loving God, who knows best and will always treat his children in ways that are for his ultimate goal. Um, yeah. So we must also remember that faith is a gift that is given to us from God. Um, and, you know, when we, when we face trials and tribulations, the more we, um, the more we doubt God, the more we exaggerate our problems. And the more, we, uh, the more faith we have in God, the more chances we have of um, overcoming our trials and our tribulations. That's the short message that I wanted to share with you today. I pray that God will help us all um, grow and increase our faith in Him. And yeah, God bless you. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you, Lord, so much for your faithfulness to us. Lord, help us to uh, grow in faith in you and continue to be faithful to you. Help us uh, to walk with you every day, to communicate with you every day, Lord, so that uh, we may um, yeah, just grow exponentially in you. Thank you so much for many blessings. Thank you for the lives that you have blessed us with. Help us uh, to influence the world the way you influence the world through your power. This prayer we pray in your most wonderful and holy name. Amen.